Welcome to Sputnik, orbiting the world with me, George Galloway. And me, Gayatri, back at work with the baby just outside the studio. A name change for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, is surely in order, given that it was last seen killing people in the deserts of North Africa. It is nuclear armed, with thousands of warheads, aggressive, expansive, and extremely dangerous. And they're coming here, this weekend. In Cardiff, the NATO leaders of the gang that couldn't shoot straight have the city in lockdown. Some people are afraid, others are on the march against them. Just what the great and peaceful city of Cardiff did to deserve this visit by the war party is unclear. Perhaps they thought it would all pass quietly. If so, they have another think coming. One of the organizers of this weekend's demonstrations against them is an old friend of mine for more than 30 years, Britain's communist leader, Rob Griffiths. And I'm glad to say he joins us on board the Sputnik. Rob, what did Cardiff do to deserve this visit and what do you have planned? Well, nothing that I'm aware of. Uh, and in fact, uh, Cardiff uh, Council is uh, hosting a counter summit. So the city, uh, the city of Cardiff's elected representatives didn't issue any invitation. And they've clearly shown that their, their sympathies lie more with the demonstrators than with the, uh, the leaders of the so-called free world who will be meeting in Cardiff and Newport. Um, there will be, there is a warm welcome planned for them. Uh, there's a, an encirclement of Cardiff Castle today, or should I say an encirclement of the wire and concrete that now surrounds Cardiff Castle today, where the summit leaders will uh, meet in uh, just over a week's time. Uh, there's a big international demonstration in Newport, a joint venue of the of the summit uh, on Saturday. Assemble at one o'clock, Newport Civic Centre. There's a two-day counter-summit after that and various other events, all designed to show that the mass of the ordinary people have no interest in this summit and certainly have no support for the kind of warmongering that we can expect to hear from it. So let me get this right. They're cowering inside a castle which is itself now surrounded by concrete and barbed wire. Well, it, Do, uh, apparently... That sounds like a real welcome. All of the fortifications built by the Romans and the Normans uh, 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 and the English aren't sufficient. <laughs> and uh, we need extra steel and concrete to keep, to keep the ordinary people at bay. Now, they, are, they have moved onto a posture of extremely aggressive language against Russia. Uh, they are going to, this weekend, discuss ways in which they can put forward NATO bases as close as possible <clears throat> as they can get to Russia. Now, the justification for NATO was never accepted by the likes of you or me, but the justification <laughs> for NATO was that it was a counterpoint, an answer to the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact is long gone, and half the countries that were in the Warsaw Pact are now in NATO. So what's the justification for the continuation of this war machine? Well, there was a major flaw in this uh, defense uh, or this justification for the existence of NATO from the very beginning, because the Warsaw Pact was in fact not set up until six years after NATO was <laughs> established. Um, Quite well so, made. So, so well. They, have, they have to keep, they have to keep uh, inventing new uh, justifications. I mean, as you say, the Warsaw Pact wound itself up in 1993, and therefore, by its own logic, NATO should have wound itself up, instead of which it's expanded from 12 members to 28. Um, and uh, we had a series of bogeymen, if you remember, that were appointed by the Western powers after the collapse and counter-revolution in the Soviet Union. It was Gaddafi, it was the Ayatollah, it was Saddam Hussein. Once we'd finished arming him and financing mm. him and help him in, helping him to kill communists and trade unionists and so on, uh, they always have to invent new excuses. Putin is the latest bogeyman, but they're moving into cyber crime, international piracy, everything possible to try and justify the continued existence of NATO and the fact that the US in particular, of course, its ambitions are for worldwide what they call full-spectrum dominance of air, sea, land and outer space. 
Um, and uh, of course, if they can try and pr put themselves forward as an organisation that's also concerned about international piracy, cyber crime, and so on, this helps, so it believes, it's kind to of justify its uh, existence. What was the, that, that mob in, uh, in the James Bond film, Smirsh? It's a kind <laughs> of uh, mm. extra territorial uh, gang with a, with a kind of. Uh, logic, remorseless, perpetual motion uh, of its own. It's not within any n <coughs> national government's power to control. Well, the James Bond parallels are, are there, except it, they're all sort of in reverse image, aren't they? Um, you know, the, I mean, the, the, the baddie, uh, you know, is obviously Putin at the moment. He's the evil person stroking the cat on his, on his knee and so on. And yet, uh, after all, amongst other things, it's not Putin that has gone to Iraq and killed hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of civilians or killed thousands of civilians in Afghanistan or just killed uh, 2,000 civilians in Palestine. It's not Putin that's done any of this. It's the Western powers. It's the NATO powers and their allies, uh, their allies such as Israel. Now, you mention uh, uh, Iraq. Of course, one of the items on the agenda this weekend mm. will be the frankly bizarre idea that the solution to the catastrophe in Iraq is for the people who caused the catastrophe in Iraq to return mm -hmm. <laughs> to the scene of their former uh, crime. Uh, what are you expecting in that? Well, yeah, we'll you know we'll 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 have warmongering statements, not not only uh, uh, against Putin and so on, um, but uh, we'll we may well hear further excuses for intervening yet again in uh, in Iraq militarily. Um, I don't think we could expect anything better for, for as long as uh, somebody like Rasmussen is, uh, mm. is the Secretary General of NATO. After all, when, when he was Prime Minister of Denmark, he was one of the chief war I mean, he actually dragged Danish armed forces into the Iraq war. I can't remember the last time the Danish armed forces mm. were involved in any fighting at all. And he did so with the same lies as Blair and Bush, the weapons of mass destruction uh, line and so on. And he's the Secretary <coughs> General uh, right. yep. of this small country, Denmark. Uh, but he struts around the world threatening people with somebody else's army, with somebody else's <laughs> nuclear uh, weapons. Yeah, yeah. The role of Mussolini, indeed, mm. uh, through, the, uh, through the 1930s. Um, is he on his way out? Who's going to get the gig after him? And what are the British doing in all of this? Well, I think they've lined up somebody from Norway, which, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have an army any bigger than Denmark's. Um, but I think uh, the next uh, the successor is from Norway. But at the end of the day, Rasmussen and whoever else it, it is will, will merely be uh, voicing what is, yeah. at the end of the day, the foreign policy of the United States. Mm. I mean, NATO really is a tool of the United States. It's, a, it's the North American... Uh, Terrorist organization, yeah, as one really. of our uh, <laughs> tweeters uh, yes. uh, put it. Well, with that in mind, I wanted to ask you about France. Historically, France was a kind of semi-independent mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. of NATO. It refused to give the United States control of its nuclear weapons. Uh, it uh, withdrew, I think, for some years from the main committees uh, of NATO. Mm -hmm. But this... Uh, uh, least popular of all French presidents, Francois Hollande, mm. he's right in with the, with the Mumbler gang. Uh, he's taken a very um, pro-American stance in a lot of uh, foreign policy issues. Um, uh, and of course, in terms of his domestic policies, he's busy betraying all the pledges that he mm. laid before the French electorate. Um, uh, we, 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 you're quite right to say that uh, for a long period, France was not part of the military structures of NATO. I think they still participated in some of the political structures and so on. But uh, Hollande and, and one or two before him have been busy reintegrating France into NATO. But at the end of the day, Hollande himself may be on the way out. And uh, we'll have to see whether France reverts to a, perhaps a more Gaullist approach, a more independent approach in its foreign policy the kind of independent uh, foreign and defence policy that, of course, we desperately need in Britain instead of carrying on as uh, the United States' number one poodle. David Cameron, uh, like his predecessors, frankly, uh, if you think about it, since Thatcher, uh, we've had a parade of American poodles uh, in charge of this country. David Cameron cuts an unlikely uh, mm. soldier, I mm. must say, mm. a real brill cream uh, boy. <laughs> uh, but he is, uh, he seems to be itching uh, 
uh, for a fight. Mm. He tried to get us into the war with uh, Syria last August, failed with just 13 of a majority in Parliament. Now he seems to be mulling, mm. according to mm. the newspapers, mm. sending the Royal Air Force mm. back to Iraq. Mm. Well, I mean, if there was a prize at Crufts, you know, for best American poodle, I'm afraid British prime ministers would have won it uh, for the last twenty years. Best the last, of class. For the last 20 <laughs> years or more. Um, fortunately, um, it, it was a great victory for the anti war movement, George, of course, when the MPs went into Westminster uh, last year and uh, prevented Britain from joining in what would have been a mad escapade that would have strengthened the very uh, fundamentalist terrorist forces that we're now supposed to be opposing uh, now that they've spread from Syria into Iraq. So, mm. so the, the people of Britain and their elected representatives saved Cameron from himself uh, last year. Uh, and even, uh, even Ed Miliband came rather late mm. uh, to the show, but at least at the end of the day opposed what would have been an mm. act of sheer yeah. folly. Um, but uh, now, uh, instead of drawing the right conclusions from that, uh, again, the, the, the approach seems to be that if there's a problem anywhere in the world, a British and American military intervention can solve it. Um, yeah, it's the default that's position. That's right, that's right, that's right. What we need, of course, is um, international solidarity and action through the United Nations to assist those who are resisting any kind of, any kind of uh, terrorist offensive, such as the one that we're seeing ISIS launching across Iraq. Rob Griffiths, thank you very much Pleasure. indeed. Coming up after the break, as mass murder and mutilation continues to amaze and astound Western politicians and their media echo chambers, we'll be looking at the head-chopping, throat-slicing medieval obscurantists known as ISIS, or as President Obama still calls them, ISIL. Don't miss it. <laughs> Welcome back to Sputnik. Western commentators have been unsurprisingly fixated of late with the latest video horror show of an American journalist being savagely murdered by the gang of desperados going by the name of ISIS. The same murder gang, their own Western governments, with media approval, did so much to build up over the border in Syria. But the West and its allies are both directly and indirectly deeply implicated in the wave of violence in Iraq. The Bush and Blair invasion and occupation of Iraq could only lead to this. And our main ally, Saudi Arabia, is ruled by people with very much in common with ISIS, and a very great deal of their early funding came from there. Saudi Prince Bandar, known as Bandar Bush because of his closeness to one of the U.S. ruling families, is up to his neck in the bloodshed in the Levant. Mohammed Hariri is one of those now trying to rouse public opinion mm -hmm. against ISIS. Hashtag no to ISIS, and was the organizer of recent London demonstrations against them. We're glad to welcome him on board the Sputnik. Mohammed, tell the viewers, first of all, who, what is ISIS? Who are the people doing the head chopping, throat cutting and murder and mutilation? ISIS stands for Islamic State for Iraq and Syria. It's a very secretive organization. Um, from our research, um, we see um, a lot of foreigners in ISIS. Um, there are reports um, on, on the same day when uh, Mosul fell on the 10th of June, um, there was the leader who led the invasion force uh, was a guy called Omar Shishani, and he is from Chechnya. Um, there are uh, pictures of him. This is all the information I'm giving based on uh, Twitter accounts, ISIS tw Twitter accounts on the Internet. Um, so there's Omar Shishani led the invasion force on Mosul. There are pictures of him w um, uh, with Iraqi army Humvees. Um, on the 11th of June, um, there, were, there were pictures of Saudi fighters um, on the Internet. It even was picked up by Al Arabiya newspaper because they were so shocked that how come Saudis are appearing in Mosul. Um, and um, it, it got to the point where some Saudi media start having some programs on TV in Saudi Arabia uh, saying ISIS as well as Al Nusra Front in Syria are um, there are many Saudis in them and as well as leading these organizations they're all with, with non-Iraqi accent the, all the videos I've seen on the internet for ISIS uh, only one I saw that has a guy with an Iraqi accent they are either uh, Saudi accents Tunisian accents Libyan accents uh, from Chechnya I mean if you just um, uh, put on YouTube 
uh, Chechnyan fighters, you will see uh, clips, horror clips of ISIS killing innocent Syrians um, in Syria. Um, and there, there was a statement by the Tunisian interior minister in June this year uh, stating that there are 2,400 uh, Tunisian fighters fighting for ISIS between Iraq and Syria. And of course there are a lot of Europeans, thousands of them, and hundreds of them are British. Absolutely. If you, if you uh, uh, scrutinize and look at some of these um, images they come out on the internet, you will see uh, most of these men are masked. Um, but the way they are built, they're body built, um, usually an Arab uh, would have a hairy arm. Uh, we, we, we got into that much details. You see uh, hairless arms, well-built guys. Uh, who knows who they are? I mean, uh, uh, I mean the guy who uh, was on the clip the next day when Mosul fell, he's a guy from Colombia or um, uh, Ecuador, one of these South American countries. His name is Abu Sufyan. And he was talking about bringing down the borders, uh, the Sykes Picot uh, borders between Iraq and Syria. He was from, um, he was from uh, South America. So it's really difficult to tell um, with their masks mm. who are they, what, mm. the, what but they you're, are. But you're confident that not many of them are Iraqis? As an Iraqi, whether you're a Sunni or a Shia, uh, th this is a foreign ideology for us. The, the brutality, uh, the criminality, the head chopping. I mean, from my research, uh, the, 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 the head choppers, what I call them, they tend to be guys who were prisoners in the West. I mean, one guy is Khalid Sharouf. Uh, he was on the news from Australia. This guy was on drugs. He, um, he was, uh, to the point, hallucinating. And um, he was in prison for a while, came out, came to the mosque, and then went to Syria. And he appears on a lot of these head chopping videos, as well as another guy called Abu Abd al-Rahman uh, al-Iraqi. He was in prison in, 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 in Holland. Now, you see Dutch guys uh, um, uh, training these ISIS fighters. Um, there, there, are, there were, there were, there were um, a guy called Eric Haroun in the US. Um, he, he was caught on video in Syria bringing down a helicopter when they went and asked his dad in, in the US, he said, no, he can't be working for Al-Qaeda. As far as I know, my son works for the CIA. So there are... What, uh, uh, what, what can you tell us about the name change? It went from, started with ISIL and then ISIS, and they've recently reestablished themselves as IS. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very well thought move. Um, it, these guys, whoever behind them, they're very intelligent. Um, the reason for that is they want to say we're a global movement. And just in the last two months, I think they sort of doubled or tripled their recruits. Um, and it's very important to concentrate on uh, this is a, a, a generational issue. Um, it's, not the it's not the 40s and the 50s Muslims. They're targeting people as young as 14, 16, up to the age of 28. They brainwash them. You're, you're the freedom fighters. You're the Muslim fighters. Um, it's you who's going to re-establish the, uh, the, the, the Islamic State, and it's, it's you um, who's going to do it. So they're all being brainwashed to do that. But, Mohammed, uh, this ragbag of 14 to 28-year-old foreigners from America and England and all parts of the world, how come they've been so astoundingly militarily successful, sweeping across the West, the North, capturing some of the most historic and important Iraqi cities? Um, according to Snowden leaks, um, the budget for the US, one of the, the damaging uh, um, information is the budget for the CIA is 50 billion per year, okay? Now, please tell me, uh, uh, tell me how can an organization with a 50 billion dollar wouldn't notice a convoy of cars, ISIS going from Syria taking over Mosul, okay? Um, it, only yesterday there was a, a news on, um, on um, one of these Turkish uh, websites. The third Israeli drone uh, fall down over Baghdad. Uh, it's very worrying. I mean, who knows who, who is behind them? How can they have so uh, well accurate GPS? They can move so quickly from one area to the other area. They must have some good intelligence I mean, on, on, their, on their videos, they show a lot of drones. Where do they get these drones from? Um, well, I have no doubt that they are, uh, their provenance is dubious. I have no doubt that they are the richest 
terrorist organization in all history. But the facts remain that the, both the Iraqi army and the Kurdish Peshmerga run away from them. That doesn't compute with me. I mean, unless these are some kind of superheroes, yeah. super fighters, why are armies 10 times bigger than them running away from them? I think um, with, with the with the uh, what happened in Mosul, the, the, uh, they think it was some kind of a, a conspiracy. How the army sort of defected suddenly, just like that. I mean, the army was uh, strong; uh, they were there. Uh, the information we have is a lot of the generals um, took their clothes off, and took uh, bribes. Uh, possibly, I mean, we can't tell. Uh, but uh, when the soldier so. Um, their generals are defecting, and um, uh, as well as ISIS is very clever with their propaganda. They use these horror, uh, and they scare people. So a soldier who is maybe 25, 26, he thinks, if my general is not standing to defend the city, why should I? Um, and it, 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 it is definitely some kind of a, a conspiracy. It doesn't um, augur well, though, for the ability of Iraq to repel these uh, people. It, it, took, it took the Iraqi authority by surprise. Um, the, the, like I said, maybe there was some kind of a, a, a conspiracy. But now forces are gathering. Can I just mention a point about arming the Iraqi army? Um, the US, they've not been so uh, good lately. With, uh, after 2011, when the Iraqi government refused to sign an extension for um, the American forces to stay in Iraq, the Americans and the Congress, um, they delayed arming the Iraqi army. It Even was, though the Iraqis had paid for the arms. Yes, I mean, it got to the point where there was an article in Reuters um, in November last year, November 2013, the Iraqi government got so desperate they had to sign an arming deal with Iran, breaking the sanctions against Iran just to get some weapons. I mean, the uh, airplanes, there are and no weapons. Russia, uh, the Iraqi government had to uh, buy airplanes from Russia. Because the, the Americans wouldn't supply us uh, with one. And it, it was only one of them. And still, as far as I know, it's either being shipped, one F-16, F or it hasn't even been shipped yet. So the, the, the Americans... I'd forget them and, uh, and get my money back uh, if I were you. Just one last uh, point. How do people watching this give support? to your campaign, this no to ISIS, hashtag no to ISIS? We, uh, we need uh, to raise awareness. Um, we need um, the, the British public uh, know that this organization, the so-called Islamic State, they're not Islamic. Um, and uh, Not Islamic, not a state. Not Islamic and, uh, well, I mean, the state, but it's, they're working on it, so we don't know how that's going to develop. Um, it, 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 it's humanity against those evil, barbaric force. Um, and um, it, we shouldn't be saying, it's their problem, let them deal with it. I, I, the civilized world, I mean, if we go back and say, imagine we are 16, 14, or 16 something before the uh, religious war started in Europe, um, you have the civilized world, we should ha contribute to stop this from happening in, in the Middle East. We, we can't just sit back and watch it happening. So no to ISIS is the hashtag uh, yes. to follow, and yeah. from there you'll uh, try to organize activities yeah. to widen an understanding of this whole thing. Mohammed Hariri, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the Sputnik. And now it's your turn to tell us what you think through the portals of social media. What's rattling, Gayatri? Well, here's a post from the UK Prime Minister saying NATO is an international military and political alliance keeping 900 million citizens across the world safe and secure with the world map. Actually, he's dragging us to the brink of war. That would be a more accurate way of describing the role of NATO. Quite, quite. Bin Mahmoud replies as well. Well, here in Newport, the police are telling local shops to board up their windows. Uh, Bill Marquez adds that NATO, a.k.a. the North American Terrorist Organization, um, is redundant. They should have begun winding it up after 1989. Now it's just cruising for a bruising to justify its own budget and reason for existing. Very well put. I mean, NATO was supposedly an answer to the Warsaw Pact. Uh, but the Warsaw Pact is 20 years gone. And most of the countries that were in the Warsaw Pact are now yeah. in NATO. Yeah. So what's the justification uh, for this? Defense against whom? Against what? It's an anti-Russian, anti-Chinese military alliance. It's a provocation. Yeah, and as Mark Atkinson says, NATO is just a dangerous tool in the hand of fools.
on Iraq, we ask the people what lies ahead for them. Uh, RM replies, I ISIS are just a bloodthirsty death cult. Looks like its master Frankenstein is out of control. And our own beloved William Hague says that IS will do a great job destroying what's left of Iraq. After all, they've been trained by the best. Yes. Hashtag CIA. Very big mystery as to who ISIS really are, who they're really working for. Well, that's all that we have got for this week. Which, alas, means that's the end of the show. Do please keep in touch with us. You know the address for Twitter is RT underscore Sputnik. And for Facebook, you can like us on Sputnik on Russia Today. It's goodbye from me, Gayatri. It's good to have you back, by the way. And from me, George Galloway, it's been marvellous.